Lately, I have seen a lot of videos attempting to sell you skirts or patterns for skirts that are adjustable and flexible in sizing and zero waste and a whole host of other things. And while I don't want to discredit the work that went into those, they are using a historical idea that is incredibly simple and you can make your own very easily. So in this video, I will show you how to make a skirt that doesn't need a pattern, doesn't need any complex math, no special equipment, only needs two measurements, only requires one to two meters of fabric, can be zero waste, can be basically any length, any fullness, heavily customizable. You can add pockets. You only need to be able to sew in a straight line so it's incredibly beginner friendly. It is massively adjustable so even if your size fluctuates by quite a bit it'll always fit you and it's historically accurate. Friends, reptiles, we have been sleeping on the 18th century petticoat. Step one, measure. For this you will need your waist measurement and your hip measurement. Your waist is where you bend in the middle. Make sure you keep the measuring tapes straight and taut to get an accurate number. This is going to determine the finished waistband of your skirt, but it is adjustable. So if your waist measurement changes a lot or you're not sure that's where you want to wear it, take a few measurements, go for the one in the middle. Your hip is actually wherever you're biggest. For a lot of people that's the widest part of the butt, but not for everyone. If the widest part is right down in your thighs, measure there. This measurement is mostly relevant for making sure you can get the skirt on or off, so where you measure isn't actually important. Inches or centimeters doesn't matter at all. If you want to work out your pleating pattern using math, I recommend centimeters, but you do not need to work out your pleating pattern using maths. I'm going to use centimeters because I had to pick one and stick with it so as not to confuse everyone, and fabric is sold in meters in the UK, and I am going to demonstrate some of the maths. If you need my measurements in Imperial, which you don't, type it into Google, it will convert it for you. Step two, fabric. Which fabric should you use? Anything you want, literally anything you want. I recommend woven fabric over knit, but honestly you can use knit if you want. I did, turned out fine. Because this skirt is so so simple, pleating a piece of fabric in your hand and holding it up to your waist will give you a pretty good idea of how this skirt is going to look. If it's poofy, the skirt will be poofy. If it's clingy, the skirt will be clingy. If it's not very much fabric at all, uh, the skirt will be very short. You'll see me using a bunch of different fabrics to make a bunch of different skirts in this video. The only other supplies except for thread you'll need to worry about is your waist ties. If you have enough fabric, you can make your own out of that. But you can also use ribbon, twill tape, anything that is long and thin and and washable and can be tied in a secure bow. If you want to add buttons or lace or other decorative features, you absolutely can, but it's very optional. Step three, cutting. The basic petticoat is made out of two rectangles. I tend to put the self edges, that's the finished edge of the fabric, at the side seams, so the skirt is as wide as the fabric is wide. This is pretty full, uh, extravagantly full, some might say. For reference, with 150 centimeter fabric, that gives me a, a total skirt width of 300 centimeters, which is four and a bit times my waist measurement, that's very full. You can go much less than that. You can also go more. A good rule of thumb for an average full skirt is to aim for three times your waist measurement. If it's a bit more or a bit less, that's fine. The smallest you want to go is double your waist measurement or your hip measurement plus like five to ten centimeters of wiggle room, whichever is larger. I do not recommend making the skirt long. If you do that, it'll be hard to walk in. There is no biggest limit you want to stop at. Go as big as you like. Go big or go home. It's a challenge to see who can make the biggest skirt now. Lengthwise, I usually divide what I have in half. One meter of fabric gives me a 50 centimeter skirt panel, which is like 45 centimeters when it's sewn up. That is well above knee on me since I'm quite tall. This is a good length if you mostly wear modern clothes and are looking for something that isn't too old fashioned and will line up with a lot of your wardrobe. A meter and a half gives me a 75 centimeter panel, which is about 70 centimeters when sewn up, and that hits a bit below knee. It's an awkward sort of length for most people, but I think the 60 centimeter to 80 centimeter range is good for more vintage or dark academia looks, or more fairy core or hobbit core. Two meters of fabric is a 100 centimeter skirt panel or a 95 centimeter finished skirt. This is floor length on me. I'm five foot seven with long legs. You may want to trim that down a touch, but the long length is great for history bounding, cottage core, whimsy goth, just slouching around the house. Long skirts are so cozy and comfortable. Can you go shorter? Yeah, I've made a mini skirt version. Can you give it a train? Yeah, that also works just fine. If you have extra fabric, either because you've made paddles narrower or shorter, or you just have a lot more fabric than the skirt needs, you can use this to make a waistband, pockets, a big bow sash, add ruffles. The sky is the limit, honestly. For now, we're going to assume you're using a ribbon or twill tape for your waist ties, but if you want to make those out of fabric, we'll cover that a little bit later too. Step 
for sewing. The two rectangles will be joined at the sides with a straight seam, stopping a little bit short of the top. Backstitch the top of the seam to reinforce this point. Both sides of the skirt are identical. This gap at the top is your side opening. How big do you want to make your side opening? Well, as big as you want, but there's roughly two schools of thought here. One, make it as small as possible. These side openings let you get the skirt on and it also gives it its adjustability. So you do want some gap, but they can also gape a little. So the smaller they are, the more likely they will open to only show the bottom of your shirt. You can just eyeball this and tweak it if you need to. Try skipping to the pleating stage, pin the pleats in, try it on a couple of times, adjusting the side seams until you've got a comfortable gap. You can also work it out with maths. It's pretty simple. The smallest possible length of your side gap is your hip measurement minus your waist measurement divided by four plus your waistband seam allowance. You might want to add a tiny bit of ease to that for comfort. One or two centimeters is plenty because when you open it up, one centimeter of extra length on each side is four centimeters of extra circumference to get it over your butt. The other school of thought in how big to make your side openings is big enough for pockets, in which case you want to make them at least the width of your hand plus waistband seam allowance plus some ease for comfort. When I say at least, I make sure mine are big enough for my hand holding an iPhone. Your boy has needs, okay? Don't know what your waistband seam allowance should be. If you're using a ribbon or tape as your waist tie, it's double the width of that ribbon. If you're doing something else, you'll have to determine your own seam allowance, but it shouldn't be too hard and there's some room for error. It's normally like one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch. Once you've sewn and ironed both your seams open, you can leave it like that and go on to the next step. I like to sew down the seam allowances around the side openings. Just sew straight down one side to slightly below the top of the seam, put the needle down, foot up, turn the whole thing 90 degrees, foot back down, sew just across the bottom to the other side, put the needle down again, foot up, turn another 90 degrees, foot back down, and sew back up the other seam allowance. The next step is to add the hem. Single fold, double fold, overlock and turn under, rolled hem, bias binding. However, you want to do a hem, just finish the bottom of your skirt. That's the side that doesn't have side openings. Because it is a straight line, this should be relatively easy. Next, I'm gonna cut my waist ties. Each one has to be long enough to go around my waist and tie in a bow. If you're not sure, err on the side of too long. You can always trim them down. You cannot make them longer. The penultimate step, yes, we're almost done already. Can you see why I love these? We have a skirt that is much bigger than our waist. It's time to pleat that down. Do you have to pleat it? No, but we'll get on to that. For now, let's pleat. What I recommend you do is mark out the center of one of your waist ties, mark one quarter of your waist measurement to either side of that mark. So you have half of your waist measurement in total. Put the right side, so the side that will face outwards when you wear the skirt, of one skirt panel against the waist tie and match up the center of the panel to the center of the waist tie. Match up the edges of the side openings to the two side marks. You can go a little bit over these if you want a bit of an overlap at the sides. Maybe a couple of centimeters, not too much. It's one waist tie for the front and one waist tie for the back, so you're only working with half of the skirt at a time. At this point, you can just pleat it by eye. If you're happy fussing around until it looks about right, just fuss around until it looks about right. If it looks even to you, it'll probably look even to everyone else. If that's a bit overwhelming, but you are also not a fan of maths, you can find the middle of a section, so this half of the waist, the center of the waist tie is here, and the center of this half of the fabric is here, so I'll match those up, and then I can go in half again, and again if I need to, and at some point you'll have a small enough piece of fabric in the gap that you can just make a pleat and secure it. If you don't know, a knife pleat is just a fold in the fabric like so. I generally find it's more flattering if they point away from the center of the body. So when I'm on the wrong side of the fabric like this, I press the fabric flat towards the side opening and then fold the extra fabric back towards the center. If I was on the right side of the fabric, I press the fabric flat towards the center and fold back towards the sides. So you can probably guess that this means the pleats are mirrored on both sides. And in the center of the waist, there will be two mirrored knife pleats back to back, or what we call a box pleat. If you get this wrong or do it differently, it will not stop the skirt being functional. So don't stress about making it look exactly like mine. If you get it wrong, learn from it from the next one. The other way you can figure out your pleats is with maths. A lot of sewing people are not great at maths. And then they make tutorials where they go, ah, 
Ah, maths! But I promise this isn't too bad and then explain the maths really poorly in a really overcomplicated way. I'm gonna try not to do that. <laughs> Decide how many pleats you want. Let's say 10. 10 is a really small number. 12 to 20 is what I'd normally go with, but sure, 10. You're going to have two numbers that are constant. The width of your skirt panel and the width of your waist measurement. Two skirt panels, two halves of your waist, only half of your waist measurement at a time. Divide the width of your skirt panel by 10. That's how much fabric is going in each pleat. Mark it like so on the fabric. Divide your half waist measurement by 10. That's how big each pleat is going to look and that's the measurement you mark on the waistband. Now you just match up the marks and make the pleats. The pleats will almost certainly have extra in the back here. That's completely fine. Once you have your pleats in place, sew the waist tie down. This bit won't show so I tend to just go straight down the middle. Then once I've taken all the pins out and pressed it, I fold the waist tape to the inside and sew along the top and bottom of the waist tie from side opening to side opening. This just makes a neat waistband. And that's it. You have a skirt. Step five, troubleshooting. I don't like this gap at the side. You can make the length of your pleated panels longer if you want more overlap and less side gap. If you want to make your skirt waistbands overlap more at the side, you probably want to make your side openings deeper than the minimal measurement we worked out earlier. Otherwise, they have a tendency to puff out more. If you're already making them pocket deep, it'll just make it slightly harder to get into the pockets. My hem isn't level. If you are bigger in one direction than another, for example, if you have a curvy bottom, a pregnancy bump, a tilted pelvis, or you're fitting over pocket hoops, your hem will go up in the direction where you stick out more. Modern sewing levels the hem by adjusting the bottom of the skirt. However, you're going to find that makes sewing the hem more difficult than if it's straight on the grain of the fabric. The historical solution here is to adjust from the waist. When I'm at the pleats all pinned in stage, I like to put the skirt on, tie some elastic around my waist, and then adjust the top up and down until the hem looks even. When you're happy, again, if it looks even to you, it'll probably look even to everyone else. You don't have to be super precise about it. Mark where the final waistline will be, take the skirt off and trim the top accordingly before adding the waist ties. Step six, customizations. Do I have to pleat it? No, if you want to gather it instead, that also works. Sew a long line of big stitches, either by hand or using the longest stitch length on your machine. If you're feeling responsible, uh, do a second line a centimeter or two down from that. Then gently pull on the threads or just the top threads if you're using a sewing machine to gather up the fabric. Careful not to just pull them totally out. I like to pull on both sides a little at a time, but you can also secure one side of the gathering stitches if that's what you prefer. Once you've got it down to your waist measurement, you can just move the little gathering bumps around until they look nice and then sew them down just like you would with the pleats. I don't like the waist ties. You can make your own waist ties out of fabric if you'd like something a bit more aesthetic. Cut two long strips of fabric at least four times as wide as you want your final waistband and long enough to go around your waist and tie in a bow. If you're not sure how wide that is, somewhere between 8 and 16 centimeters for a final waistband of two to four centimeters is a good ballpark. You also don't have to have extremely long fabric. You can sew multiple strips together if you need to make the total length. You do want to cut these on the straight grain of the fabric, so straight up and down or side to side, not the bias. If you use bias binding for these waist ties, they'll stretch out every time you wear them. I like to finish the short ends first by folding them over once and sewing a tiny baby hem. Then at the ironing board, you're going to fold your fabric strip in half and press that down, then open it up and fold each side into not quite meet that center fold and press again. Now when you fold the waistband tie in half, the raw edges are inside. Match the center of the tie to the center of your skirt panel and tuck the top of the skirt panel inside the waistband. Sew along the edge of the waistband tie along the whole length. I like to start in the middle and work outwards on each side. I think it makes it a little bit easier to focus on the most visible bit in the middle first. If you want a big wide waistband and ties, I find it's more aesthetically pleasing if you just do that on the front and use a much narrower tie on the back. That way you get the cute back bow, but you don't get a lot of bulk and fuss added from the back waistband. How to wear it. To wear the skirt. Firstly, get into the middle of it with the side openings at your sides. Line the back up against your back and tie the waistbands comfortably at the front. Line the front of the skirt up how you want it, usually with the box pleat nicely centered in the middle, and tie the waist ties in the back. That's it. It can be that simple. I don't like the bump in the front from the waist ties. You can make your back waist tie much longer and then you can wrap it around in the front, take it to the back and tie it there. I don't like the front waist ties being visible in back. You've got two options here. Firstly, you can make the front waist ties more decorative, like a big fabric sash that you tie into a very obvious bow. The alternative takes a little practice, but you can tie the front waist ties under the back of 
of the skirt. So you tie the back as normal, line up the front of your skirt as before, then lift up the back of your skirt. You're going to go under and through the side openings to grab the front waist ties. Take these through the side openings and tie them in the back. Then let the back of the skirt down over them. You have to be able to tie a bow by touch, but I find once you've practiced a couple of times, it's a pretty easy solution to ugly waist ties. Conclusion. So there you have it, we have a skirt. But it's only the most simple possible version of this skirt. There are many, many possible customizations that are available to you, from pockets to big bow sashes to ruffles and side slits and button plackets. If you'd like to see some more like this, let me know and I'll make a part two with all the other ideas I've tried out over time. If there's a particular idea you think might be possible but aren't sure about, leave a comment and if I can figure it out, I'll include it. Depending on how I do that, uh, may even be a sneaky third video where we take the basic form and get really weird with it. <laughs> Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep the YouTube gods happy. Down in the description box you can find links to all my other social media and to my Ko-fi page, where you can make a one-off or reoccurring donation to support this channel and my pension for expressing frustration by just making the damn thing and putting it on the internet. Ko-fi supporters get early access to all of my videos, permanent access to delisted content and the occasional extra sneak peek into what's coming next. I couldn't do what I do without their support. If you end up making a petticoat of your own, tag me, I'd love to see it. Dream big and I'll see you next time.